You probably know where to find the landing page report in Google Analytics, the Universal Analytics version, because there is an actual report label in the left navigation. But in Google Analytics 4 or GA4, it's not so apparent. So we're going to show you how or where you can find that page report. So here we are looking at the report snapshot, which gives you an overview of your GA data. But what we'll do is in this left navigation is click on engagement and then pages and screens. And this will, this is kind of similar to the page report in Universal Analytics. Now it gives you the page title and the screen class along with these other metrics such as number of views, the number of users, new users, views per user, and so on. But what we're going to do is change the page title and screen class to page path and screen class. So that'll give you your pages by the page path or the end of the URL after your domain. So now we have the page path listed here, the top 10, and we will scroll to the event count column, click on all events and type in session start. So that's the name that of the event that will indicate the first pages that users view when they first arrive on your site. And we can click on this column in order to sort by that column. So for this GA4 demo account for the Google Merchandise Store, we can see that the most common landing page that users see when they first arrive on the site is the home page with over 44,000 sessions starting from this page. 44, over 44,000 out of the 103,000 sessions. And the second highest amount of sessions for the landing page is this directory, which is WFH. I'm guessing that's short for work from home merchandise at almost 12,000 sessions. And of course, this is for the date range above the last 28 days. After that, there is a big drop off at just under 3,400 sessions for this landing page, which is the campus collection directory. And then some other some other merchandise for Google redesign pages, shopping by brand, shopping by accessories, and men's apparel. So this is our landing page report in GA4. Now, you'll have to configure this report every time you want to see this report here, but what we can do is create a report that is saved in the Explore tab. So if we click on Explore there and click on Freeform, it'll bring us to a page where we can configure a report to our liking. And once that loads, It'll give us a data table of the dimension and metrics that are currently configured as this default template. So what we're going to do is remove this city dimension in the row section and also the device category. We're going to add a dimension for page path and query stream. So check that off, apply it. And 
Make sure you drag the dimension that you added into your rows section. And that'll populate the data table for you. Now you can also configure the rows with these other inputs. For example, if you want to start the row at another number, like if you want to start from 11 instead of one, or if you want to show more rows or the data in with nested rows. For example, if you want to add another dimension to your table, it'll show the page path in the query and nest, for example, if you add city, it'll show each city under for each line item. So if you scroll down to the value section, we can keep the active users metric, but we'll look at adding a filter because that's what we'll need in order to create the landing page report that we want. So we'll click on this section here and then click on event name. And what we'll do is for the filter, the match type that we want, let's choose exactly matches and enter this, the expression. So from the previous report, it's session start and we'll click apply. And when that applies, that'll apply the filter that we just created to this table. And this is the landing page report that we want. And let's name it this so, so that we know what this report actually is. Now, there's a caveat to this report. If you don't have tracking for unique users configured, then this active users metrics may not be accurate. So if you don't have unique user tracking set up, then it's better to use sessions because this is not actually an active, an accurate number for the number of users. But if you do have tracking for unique user setup, for example, if a user logs into your website and they are given a unique user ID, then you can keep this active users metric. Otherwise, I would suggest adding another metric for sessions and apply that to the report. So instead of active users, we will drag and drop sessions into our report. This gives us the number of sessions with these landing pages as the first page that users view in their visit. So what we'll do is we will order this table, we'll sort it, in descending order. What we'll do is make this report similar to the landing page report in GA Universal Analytics. So we'll add a couple metrics here. We'll start off by searching for engage, engagement rate, and this metric is similar to the bounce rate. So the bounce rate will show you the number of visits where the users left the first page without navigating to any other page divided by the number of sessions. And the engagement shows the number of sessions that included visits where the user stayed on the page longer than 10 seconds, they navigated to another page, or they took an action and fired an event. Click on apply, scroll down in your metrics and drag the engagement rate over to values. And it shows us the data that's been added to the table. Only 27% of sessions with the home page as the landing page engage in that session. 
In other words, the home page as a landing page has a bounce rate of 73%. Now there are other pages like these two that have higher engagement rates. So this is our basic landing page report. You also want to rename this report in the right hand upper right corner here where it says exploration name. And here, this is where we'll name it landing page report. And we'll name this tab just landing pages. So when you go to your explore section, click on it and it'll load the report. Then you can change the date range to view the data for that time frame that you're interested in. So if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.